Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I, I, I would like to start out by saying good afternoon, but it's really nothing good about this afternoon for us. Uh, I want to just provide you a little bit of update uh, in terms of the events that took place yesterday afternoon. Um, after uh, late yesterday, after late yesterday evening, uh, there I'm sure you're all aware there was a, a three-car collision the intersection of 301 and Wilkinson Road uh, that involved two of our officers along with a individual that was in custody uh, inside a vehicle uh, and a an, another vehicle. Um, those officers, uh, unfortunately, one of our officers uh, succumbed to his injuries early this morning. Uh, the other officer that's uh, at VCU Medical is in critical but stable condition, and the individual in custody uh, is in critical condition as well. Uh, all those families are, um, I've been notified, uh, there's some tremendous support at the hospitals with those individuals, and we've gotten tremendous support uh, here uh, from community members, uh, our law enforcement partners, county administration, uh, it's just been an overwhelming support uh, from all those individuals. And uh, we're just asking, you know, the community to continue to keep all of those families in your thoughts and prayers uh, as we continue to investigate this incident uh, to, to, you know, to really reveal what the facts are concerning this case. Uh, but, you know, right now our overwhelming uh, thoughts are with those families. Our thoughts and prayers go out to those families, uh, you know, we've, we've lost one of our own. And that is always difficult when you lose that, lose on your own. And so we just ask you all to continue to keep us in your thoughts and prayers as we try to move forward and try to mitigate, um, you know, some of the hurt that we're feeling right now and the pain that we're feeling. So uh, at this point, I just wanted to make sure you all had an update uh, concerning the conditions of those individuals. Uh, you know, we don't have any anything or any arrangements or anything else like that going forward as of right now. I'm sure those will be coming. Uh, and right now, we're just trying to gather our uh, inner inner strength within our own division, just trying to maintain and make sure we keep our, our officers uh, in the right frame of mind. Uh, because as you know, there you know there's still work that has to be done. You know, we we just can't drop the ball and and continue to move uh, and continue to uh, just allow, allow things to continue to go on in our communities. And so those officers are hurting. You know, you got folks that are in our 911 center that took those calls. They are hurting as well. And so uh, we're just trying to make sure we, we provide the proper support to our own internal folks, as well as providing that support to those families that are really, really hurting and struggling with this uh, and trying to get answers. So. The other person who was involved with this, who was released earlier, I believe from the hospital, um, and So uh, with that, that individual was released uh, from the hospital last night. Uh, right now, uh, the crash is under investigation. Our crash team responded out. Uh, they're trying to put the pieces together. Um, they're looking at body-worn camera video, conducting interviews, uh, trying to recreate the crash scene itself. Uh, those things will be forthcoming as we continue the investigation. It's too early to try to make that determination. Parts, and as you know, the people that were involved you know, at this point, they're not able to, you know, provide any information as, as to what took place other than the individual that was released last night. And so those things are going to be a, a work in progress, uh, and we'll try to keep you all updated as we move forward. Because as well. Do you have any other agencies assisting in the investigation? Right now, there are not, uh, but I can tell you overwhelmingly, uh, I've gotten calls from the, the area chiefs, uh, federal partners. Uh, they're, they're willing to lend a helping hand if we need be. Uh, right now, we feel like we have uh, enough resources, uh, but if we don't, uh, you know, we we just have a great working relationship with other agencies. And so, you know, VCU Medical, their police department was just tremendous last night uh, at the hospital providing their support. So, uh, we we will have the resources needed if uh, if we need extra. And what can you tell us about the officer who passed away? Uh, the uh, officer is uh, is Trey Sutton, um, uh, 22 years old. Uh, been with us since June of 21. Uh, he's been with us since June of 2021. Um, just a, a tremendous individual. Uh, he was so happy about being in law enforcement. Uh, and that's that's one thing I remember, I, you know, Major Alvis and I, I saw him on Friday at a, at a crime scene. And he was just elated about being 
you know, having this uniform on and being a part of our family. Uh, so it's difficult. Uh, but, you know, uh, unfortunately, these things do happen. Uh, we're going to make sure we support that family. Uh, we're going to make sure we provide all the resources needed to make sure that family gets through this. Can you confirm that he was driving? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, Trey, Trey was driving, driving, operating the vehicle. In terms of looking at the potential causes for the crash, have you ruled out anything or, or you know, things like speed or alcohol-related as a factor potentially where that led? Can you say anything about factors involved? Well, we can we can rule out there was no alcohol related to any of the individuals in the, any of the vehicles. So that is not a, that is not a factor in the crash itself. Um, as as far as speed, those are things that we're working on to try to gather the facts to see if that. Uh, so those are things that are still we're still working on. That's correct. You know, we're, we're shrouding the, ba the badges. Uh, we have a vehicle over uh, at the station where Trey worked, uh, uh, making sure we honor him uh, and recognize him. Uh, and, you know, some other things that we're doing, a lot, of, a lot of it just has to do with what the family wants. Uh, we want to make sure we provide whatever support that the family needs. Uh, it's not about us. It's about what those family, that family needs. And so uh, we're going to make sure we, we reach out to them, uh, make sure that if they have any unmet needs that we're going to uh, provide the resources to them. Uh, but uh, you know, we're going to have our buildings shrouded as well uh, to pay respect for that. And then, as you know, across the state, uh, those agencies uh, will shroud their badges as well as honor respect for our fallen brother. And this has been an emotional day, not only for the family, but for you all as well. Can you just touch about the emotions that you're feeling personally well, well, I would say as police chief, is you know, it's, it's one of the things you don't want to experience. Uh, there's a lot of things that goes on in this profession, but the last thing you want as a police chief is to lose one of your members. So, and I would just tell, I would just tell you, me personally, I look at every member in this division as, as my responsibility. And so, when you when you have a tendency to lose one, it, it hurts. It hurts. Uh, and we, and we know those things are you know can happen in our profession, but. It doesn't diminish the, the fact that, you know, we're all emotional. Um, you know, that family was very emotional last night. Uh, that is not news that you want to bring to uh, a family. Uh, so it's difficult. Uh, and so, you know, we've asked our folks to continue to lean on one another. Uh, if there's resources that we need to get to our individual members, we're going to do that. Uh, because it is very difficult to go through this. Uh, you know, you know, you just just a year ago, we lost one of our members to a hit and run accident. And so now we're going through this again, uh, another tragic incident for one of my members. So uh, it, it never gets easy. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, there is a lot of support, uh, not only from community, uh, but from uh, our partners as well in local law enforcement. And so we're going to, you know, we, this, as, as I always say, this too shall pass, uh, but it's not going to be easy. Um, and, you know, again, I, I just want to make sure that we don't forget about the individual uh, the, that we had in custody. Uh, I know we talk about our officers and that is extremely important, uh, but we don't want to forget about the individual that's in custody, uh, that, he, that he's battling for his life as well. And we want to make sure we support that family as well. And so, though all those things are important, so, uh, you know, I just ask you all to continue to keep us in our prayers because we're going to need it. Yeah, I mean, at this time, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, when you, anytime there's critical and you're stable, uh, there's, there's always the possibility of being able to pull through. Uh, we don't have enough uh, factors to, to make the determination again. I don't think any of us here are medical per personnel, but they're, they're keeping us updated on his condition. Uh, and so uh, he has family by his side. He has police support by his side. Uh, and we're going to make sure we stay there with their family to make sure they have the needs, uh, have, the, uh, have their needs met. Uh, but he's fighting. Uh, he is fighting. Uh, very strong individual, very well respected in the organization. Uh, and we're praying, we're praying that he does pull through. We 
we have not been able to make that determination. This is it's still a uh, early in the investigation. Uh, again, as I mentioned, this body worn camera that has to be looked at. Uh, there's still interviews that have to take place. There's re still reconstruction of that scene that needs to take place. Uh, and so the, all those things, we're trying to put those pieces together in order to make that determination. Uh, at, this, at this point in time, we can't, we can't, uh, can't speak on that because those factors haven't been gathered as, as of yet. Well, the the other officer we actually we can provide provide names. Uh, name is Greg Petrohovich. Uh, uh, he's been with us since 2014, uh, uh, and and uh, he was uh, very very well respected in the organization. Uh, he's one of our training officers, uh, and just does a tremendous job for our for our community and for our community members. Uh, and so uh, we're 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 praying very very rigorously that he's going to be able to pull through. Uh, uh, you know, that was a lot of trauma. It was a, it was a, it was a serious, very serious crash uh, last night, and uh, we had an overwhelming response. Uh, and I, I just I want them, uh, you know, I fell in to mention that our, our fire department did an outstanding, outstanding job. Uh, and so we we've had we've had the resources there, uh, but he is very well respected. And uh, again, you know, our organization is trying to trying to maintain and make sure. That his family has those resources needed, and um, he, he, like I said, he's very well respected in the organization, and we're just hopeful and prayerful that he will be able to pull through this, this serious incident. Are you able to confirm whether or not um, all three individuals in the car were wearing seatbelts? Still, that's early on in the investigation. I am not able to confirm that as of yet. Is it department policy then? Department policy, yes, yes. And yeah. Well, Now, I would say, you know, uh, he, he had just recently graduated from a basic academy class. Uh, I think he'd been out, out of the academy class maybe a couple months. Uh, so very new, very new officer. Uh, but he was just so excited. He was so excited about taking this job uh, and being out there. He was, he was having a great time. Uh, you know, the things that you, you think about uh, when somebody starts their career in this profession is that, you know, I look at him as someone that had so much to give to this community. Uh, so much to give to his family and so much to give to society. And, you know, when it's cut short like that, it, it, it hurts uh, because he was not able to, to accomplish those things. So, uh, you know, it's just something that, you know, we, we got to work through as, a, as an organization, as a family. Uh, and that's one thing I will say about Henrico PD. Uh, we are very family oriented. We take care of one another. Uh, and we will, we'll have to do the same thing to get through this as well. He was extremely impressive, um, did a great job getting through the academy, as many of you not easy uh, to get through. There's a lot of folks that go through our academy and don't make it out of the academy just because it is rigorous, uh, because of the nature of the job. And he did a tremendous job of, of, of obtaining that, and it was a goal of his. Uh, uh, and we were very looking forward. Uh, to his commitment uh, to this community uh, and to the organization. Uh, it's just unfortunate that his life got cut short uh, due to the accident. And you had mentioned that you had last seen him Friday. Was that the last time you interacted, interacted with him before his passing? Yes, me personally, yes. Uh, he was out there doing his job uh, on a crime scene, uh, assisting in that crime scene. And, you know, maybe I was just reached out to him and said, you know, how's it going? He said, I love it. You know, uh, he was having a good time. Uh, so, you know, for me, seeing that, that's, that's what's going to give me joy because I know he was doing what he wanted to do. All right. So I appreciate everyone coming uh, today, and uh, there will be additional follow-ups uh, with uh, things forthcoming as far as funeral arrangements and so forth. Uh, on behalf of the chief, his entire executive staff, the men and women of the Henrico County Police Division, we appreciate you coming here today, and we'll be sure to keep each and every one of you up to date with the new developments of this uh, investigation. Yeah, and I, and I do want to say thank you all. Uh, thank you all for your patience. Uh, this is never easy, but thank you all uh, for being here. Uh, 
we'll, like I said, we'll try to get as much information out as possible, but uh, this is going to take a little while in order to try to decipher and, and get all the facts of this case. But uh, I just ask for your patience in this uh, because, you know, right now those families are hurting and we, we really just need to take care of those, those families. And so, again, thank you all. All right, thank you.